Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be discussing one offensive x-factor for each NFC team in 2020. Before we get started, please like and subscribe, it really helps my channel grow. And on a quick side note, if you don't already know, I've been writing some articles for the updog.com, which is basically a sports article website where anyone under the age of 22 can post articles on any sports topic that they're interested in. If any of you are, one, interested in reading some of the articles on the website, feel free to go check those out. I'll leave a link to them in the description down below. There are some really interesting articles up and we're coming out with new content daily. Secondly, if any of you are under the age of 22 and are interested in doing some sports writing, then you can sign up on the updog.com immediately. By the way, it's free and you can write as much or as little as you want. The only requirements are that you're under 22 and are interested in sports writing. If this is something that even partially interests you, why not give it a shot? It's a good thing to put on a resume. And once again, you can write as much or as little as you want. I'll leave the link in the description down below for those that are interested. Now let's dive right into the video and I hope you enjoy. So when I'm talking X factors for a team offensively, I'm talking about a player, an offensive line maybe, a group of players, or a coach that will really make or break that team season in 2020. I'm going to start with the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. There are a lot of options for this Dallas offense, but I think Prescott is the guy who's going to be most important going forward for the Cowboys. So last season in 2019, even though the Cowboys only won eight games, that offense was terrific, and Dak was one of the main reasons why that offense was really, really high-powered. He threw just shy of 5,000 passing yards, 30 passing touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and those are really, really good stats on 65.1 completion percentage. Dak has got all the weapons in Ezekiel Elliott, as well as a great wide receiving core with new first-round draft picks, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, and Michael Gallup. For this offense to work, Dak is going to need to work too. They brought in Mike McCarthy as the new head coach, and McCarthy has had success making quarterbacks really, really good. If you look at why Aaron Rodgers was really successful, a lot of that came from Mike McCarthy. Although Kellen Moore is going to be the offensive coordinator next year, as well as the play caller for the Dallas Cowboys, Dak is still going to learn a lot from Mike McCarthy, and he is the most important piece to this Dallas offense. So let's continue on with our streak of quarterbacks, and of course it's going to be Carson Wentz for the Eagles. In 2019, Wentz played in all 16 games, threw for over 4,000 yards, 63.9 completion percentage, on 27 touchdowns and 7 interceptions. Wentz carried Philadelphia on his back to the playoffs. I mean, what he did last year with almost no weapons was exceptional. If he's able to continue that into 2020, then this Eagles team can easily win 11 to 12 games. They've got the talent on the roster, and they brought in reinforcements in the wide receiving core this offseason with Jalen Rager out of the draft. Wentz is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and the former pro bowler back in 2017 is a phenomenal player. If he's able to play like he did last season, then the sky's the limit for this Eagles team. And I think without him, the Eagles will really struggle. Therefore, for me, Carson Wentz is the clear X factor for this Eagles offense. So let's move on to this Washington football team where I think their X factor is Dwayne Haskins. In 2019, Haskins played in nine games, threw for over 1,300 yards, seven touchdowns, and seven interceptions on a 58.6 completion percentage. Last season, Haskins was sloppy most of the time, but he did shine in a few occasions. Overall, Haskins wasn't good last year, and he really is going to need to pick it up in 2020. However, if the Haskins that we saw at Ohio State ends up showing up next season, then this offense won't be terrible. I mean, they've got a good wide receiver in Terry McLaurin, and it's going to be interesting to see how that Haskins and McLaurin partnership really evolves and how it affects that aerial attack. Overall, if Haskins ends up finding his stride in 2020, then this offense could honestly be solid. I mean, anytime you have young quarterbacks that find their stride, that normally bodes well for a team's offense. So look for Haskins to really be that guy in 2020 that could make or break this Washington offense. Now let's move on to the New York Giants X Factor, which I think is going to be Saquon Barkley. Last season, Barkley didn't play in all 16 games. He missed three games, but he still rushed for over 1,000 yards and six rushing touchdowns. As a pass catcher, he had 52 catches and 438 receiving yards, as well as two receiving touchdowns. His stats in 2019 weren't anywhere near his stats in 2018, but nonetheless, Saquon Barkley still established himself and still showed to the NFL that he was a top five running back in the NFL. I think for this Giants offense, Barkley is essential. He's going to help Daniel Jones feel comfortable in the pocket, and if Daniel Jones feels comfortable in the pocket, then this offense will be better. 
This offense will end up relying on Barkley a lot as he's the most dynamic and explosive player on this offense. So overall, I don't think I'm turning too many heads by saying Saquon Barkley is the Giants offensive X factor. Now let's move to the NFC South where we're going to start with the Atlanta Falcons and I believe their X factor is Todd Gurley. This offseason they brought in Todd Gurley through free agency and when Gurley's healthy and ready to go, he's one of the NFL's best running backs. In 2019, he played in 15 games, had 857 rushing yards, 12 rushing touchdowns on 3.8 average yards per carry. He had 31 receptions for 207 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns, but his stats in 2018 were much better. Nonetheless, the Falcons really had problems with the run game last year. Their offense was very good at throwing the football with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, but Devontae Freeman couldn't get the run game going. Therefore, Gurley is the key for this Falcons to be a top five offense in 2020. If Gurley is able to play like he did in 2018, then I think this Falcons offense is a top 10, if not top five offense moving forward. But right now, they're really relying on the passing game. But if they're able to establish a solid running game with Todd Gurley, that offense will just be 10 times better. Now, this is the one that's going to surprise some people. For the Saints X Factor on offense, I think it's going to be Emmanuel Sanders. And here's why. So, over the past few seasons, Michael Thomas and Drew Brees have only gotten the Saints offense so far, and Emmanuel Sanders is the guy to take them over the edge and to make them go to the Super Bowl. So, in 2019, he played in 17 games. Yep, you're seeing that right. He did play in 17 games because he played for Denver and San Francisco. He had 66 catches for 869 receiving yards and 5 receiving touchdowns. Sanders is a great second wide receiver. He's shown that he can play with good quarterbacks in Pittsburgh as well as in Denver with Peyton Manning. But overall, Emmanuel Sanders is a good quality wide receiver. As I said, Michael Thomas and Drew Brees have only taken this team so far, and adding Emmanuel Sanders adds a legit NFL wide receiver to the mix in the Saints offense. By adding him, this gives Drew Brees another weapon and another guy that the Saints can use in the passing game. It also means that if other teams want to end up double teaming Michael Thomas, they've got Emmanuel Sanders to worry about. Overall, I think Emmanuel Sanders is the key for getting this Saints team over the hump and watch out for Emmanuel Sanders to really give that Saints offense that desperate push they need to get to the Super Bowl in 2020. Now let's move on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't think it really comes as a surprise that Tom Brady is the X Factor here. He's a 14-time Pro Bowler, 3-time All-Pro member, 6-time Super Bowl champion, and 3-time MVP caliber player. Last season in 2019, he played in 16 games, threw for over 4,000 yards, 24 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. Last season, the Bucks' quarterback was Jameis Winston. Winston had problems all season throwing interceptions, and bringing in Brady wasn't just a move to make this team into a playoff team, but it was really a move to cut down on interceptions and to play more efficient offense. Brady is going to really make this offense come alive. If he's able to put up Jameis Winston-like stats without the interceptions, I think that this Buccaneers offense is going to be a top three offense in the NFL. I mean, they've got weapons all over the field, and they only keep on adding them. This offseason, they brought in Rob Gronkowski, they brought in LaShawn McCoy, and of course they brought in Tom Brady. But overall, Brady's got the weapons, and he's got two of the NFL's best wide receivers in Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Brady's going to have to really facilitate this offense, and with him in Tampa Bay, I think this Bucks team has a shot at the playoffs. Now with the Carolina Panthers, it should come as no surprise that Christian McCaffrey is the X factor for them. In 2019, in 16 games, he had over 1,300 rushing yards, 15 rushing touchdowns, 4.8 average yards per carry, 116 receptions, 1,005 receiving yards, and 4 receiving touchdowns. Those stats are insane, and anytime your team has one of the NFL's best offensive players, arguably Christian McCaffrey is the NFL's best offensive player, he's going to be the main focal point of your offense. That's just what it is. The Panthers offense really runs through Christian McCaffrey, although I do like the receivers with DJ Moore, as well as Robbie Anderson and Curtis Samuel, Christian McCaffrey is the heart and soul of this offense, and he's the leader of this offense. If he isn't putting up his 1,000 rushing yards and 1,000 receiving yards, this Panthers offense is going to take a real setback next year. McCaffrey is a dual-level threat, and if he's able to continue what he was able to do last season, this Panthers offense is going to be good. I mean, they only improve this offseason by bringing in some help on the offensive line, as well as by bringing some help in the receiving core. Plus, they got a new quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater, but it all starts with Christian McCaffrey. So watch out for Christian McCaffrey to be that X factor in Carolina in 2020. Now let's move on to the NFC North, where we're going to start with the Detroit Lions. And for the Detroit Lions offense, I think Matthew Stafford is a really important player for them. Not only is he the quarterback, but he's been there for a while. And in 2019, he played in eight games, and he threw just shy of 2,500 yards, 
19 touchdowns and 5 interceptions. If he played all 16 games, he would have thrown for about 5,000 yards, 38 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. Those kind of stats are elite kind of stats. And if Matthew Stafford's able to do that in 2020, this Lions offense is going to be really high-powered. They've got a lot of great wide receivers in Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones Jr., and Danny Amendola, and a solid tight end in TJ Hawkinson. Although they did lose Graham Glasgow in free agency, that O-line is still pretty solid. And at the end of the day, if Matthew Stafford's able to put up 5,000 yards, 38 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions next season, then this offense is going to be really, really good. Last year, you saw what David Blau and Jeff Driscoll were able to do with its Lions offense, which in other words was basically nothing. So with Stafford able to put up those really, really high quality stats, watch out for this Lions offense. So with the Minnesota Vikings, the X factor for them on offense is Dalvin Cook. So at the date of recording, Dalvin Cook is still holding out, but in 2019 and 14 games, he had over 1,100 rushing yards, 13 rushing touchdowns, 4.5 average yards per carry, 53 catches for 519 receiving yards, and no receiving touchdowns. At the end of the day, this Vikings offense is a run-first offense, and they're led by their running back. Dalvin Cook allows for this passing game in Minnesota to open up and be really, really good. Dalvin Cook is the heart and the soul of this Vikings offense, and without him, this Vikings offense led by Kirk Cousins just won't be as good. Therefore, Dalvin Cook is really important. Alexander Madison, the backup running back there in Minnesota, did put up good stats last year, but in very, very little playtime. Therefore, Dalvin Cook is a generational running back for this Minnesota Vikings team, and they're really going to need him in 2020 if this Vikings offense wants to get off the ground. Now let's move on to the Packers. With the Green Bay Packers, their X factor on offense is going to be their run game. So last season in 2019, their run game ranked 15th overall, which is above league average, but not by much, and they ran the football 40% of the time. I think both of those numbers could go up. Matt LaFleur really wants to run the football, and he's committed to running the football too. If you saw what happened to Aaron Rodgers' stats last year, he saw a little bit of a decline because he wasn't throwing the ball as much. Mike McCarthy liked to throw the ball about 67% of the time, and LaFleur likes to throw it about 60% of the time. As I said, I could see that run percentage continue to rise up into 2020 because they added more running backs in the NFL draft by getting A.J. Dillon in the second round. Now that they've got Dillon... Aaron Jones, and Jamal Williams. They've got a really good running back room, and I think this is going to be the real focal point for this offense. Matt LaFleur wants to use the running game to build onto the passing game, and I think that that run game is really going to be crucial for this Packers offense to succeed in 2020. Now, for the Bears, it's going to be their quarterback play. So it's basically Trubisky versus Foles. Whoever ends up winning the starting job is going to be the X factor for that team. If you look at what Trubisky did last year in 2019, he played in 15 games, threw for over 3,000 yards, 17 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. But before the season, people were having him as a possible MVP kind of player, and last year didn't really end up playing out that way. For Foles in 2019, he played in four games, threw for 736 yards, three touchdowns and two interceptions, and he was injured, and he ended up losing the starting job to Gardner Minshew. Nonetheless, Foles comes in with playoff experience, Super Bowl experience, and he's a former Super Bowl MVP. He's got a lot of experience, and he's definitely going to help Trubisky grow as a quarterback. But at the end of the day, he's definitely going to be able to compete for the starting job. I don't care if Foles or Trubisky wins the starting job, but what I do think is going to be the X factor for them is the better quarterback play. If the Bears are able to have better quarterback play moving forward from Trubisky or Foles, then this offense will be able to be better. A part of the reason that this offense was really, really bad last year was that Trubisky just wasn't good, and then when Trubisky went down with injury, the quarterback play didn't pick up. Therefore, the Bears quarterback play moving into 2020 from Trubisky or Foles is really, really crucial for this Bears offense moving forward. Now let's move on to the NFC West, where we're going to start with the San Francisco 49ers. For me, the X factor here is going to be George Kittle. Kittle is trending to be the number one tight end in the league, and whenever you have the best player at their position in the league, there's a high chance that they're going to be your X factor on offense. In 2019, Kittle played in 14 games, had 85 catches for over 1,000 yards and 5 receiving touchdowns, but he's also a really good blocking tight end. He's good as a run blocker, and he's very good as a pass catcher. If you double-team this guy, chances are he's still going to come down with the football, and overall, he is the main target for Jimmy G in that offense. Kittle's a really important guy for this 49ers offense, and he's a guy that Kyle Shanahan really looks to get open in the passing game so that he can be a real impact guy for this 49ers offense. 
Now let's move on to the Seattle Seahawks, where Russell Wilson's got to be the X-Factor. Russell Wilson seemingly, year in and year out, puts his team on his back, carries them to the playoffs, year in and year out, even without a good offensive line in front of him. In 2019 and 16 games, he threw for over 4,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions, and a 66.1 completion percentage. Russell Wilson is a top three quarterback in the NFL, maybe a top two quarterback in the NFL. Depends where you rank him, Mahomes, and Lamar Jackson. Nonetheless, year in and year out, he takes his team on his back, carries them to the playoffs, and for the Seahawks, that's why he's so important. Therefore, watch for Russell Wilson to try and carry that Seahawks team back to the playoffs in 2020 as he seemingly does it every year. So, Wilson, really important player for this offense, and it will be interesting to see what he's able to do in 2020. Now let's move on to the Arizona Cardinals, where it's probably not fascinating that I've chosen DeAndre Hopkins to be their X-Factor. Obviously, Kyler Murray's going to do his thing, Cliff Kingsbury's going to dial up plays and do his thing, but bringing in DeAndre Hopkins was a move this offseason to get this offense rolling. Nonetheless, Hopkins is a top NFL wide receiver, and he's probably up there with guys like Michael Thomas and Julio Jones. Overall, Hopkins is one of the game's best, and he's really going to make things easy for Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury for this Cardinals offense. Therefore, watch out for DeAndre Hopkins to be a guy that Kyler Murray really, really counts on in 2020, not only to pick up yards, to move the chains, but to just be a really efficient player in the red zone. And finally, let's move on to the LA Rams, where my X factor for them offensively is going to be their head coach and Sean McVay. In his career, McVay has had 33 wins and 15 losses, which is just shy of 69% winning percentage. That's pretty good, but McVay, when he started to make that LA Rams team really good, especially in 2018 when they made the Super Bowl, they had one of the best offenses in the NFL. McVay was dialing up plays left, right, and center and looked like one of the best coaches in the NFL. And I'm not saying that he's not a good coach. He's still a really good coach. But last year, that offense saw a little dip in production. They went to 9-7 and seven overall, and this is a really important year for McVay to reestablish himself as one of the NFL's best offensive minds. Yes, I'm not just saying McVay is their X-Factor because he has to make himself look good, but at the end of the day, he's a really good coach that really needs to get this offense going. He needs to come up with good schemes and find ways to use Jared Goff as well as his wide receivers in Cooper Cup and Robert Woods really effectively. McVay, as I said, is a real smart dude, and he's an offensive genius. He really understands how defenses work, and he really understands how to exploit them. Therefore, he's really important in making game plans for this offense moving forward, and overall, McVay needs to make this offense go back to how it played in 2018. Although they don't have Todd Gurley anymore or Brandon Cooks, McVay is smart enough to make this offense really, really dominant next season. Now that you've reached the end of my video, I want to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe as it helps my channel out, and check out my other videos on my channel. Also, you can follow my Instagram, the link is in the description down below, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, see ya.